All right, here we go. Minister T, according to this particular guy, he 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 lives his life as a white guy. His his I'm assuming autosomal numbers are 97.5 percent European composition, 2.3 percent sub-Saharan, but yet his haplogroup is E1B1A. Now, according to Ron Dalton and the line that is a coward, isn't E1B1A supposed to be Israel? Well, what they're going to say is, well, you know, he had black in his family. As you see, they're free colored persons. Yes, they are. But if he's 97.5 percent, that's more than most of us. If you go test your DNA being African, he's 97.5 percent European makes him European. So therefore, according to Ron Dalton and according to the line that is a coward, this guy would have to be an Israelite. Minister Tate. Now, let me know if I break up. But uh, that shows you the faulty reasoning that they have, which is what we've been trying to show you guys for quite some time. Now. You're breaking up. OK, well, hopefully it'll, it, it'll adjust. Right. But we've been trying to show you guys this problem that they have with this logic about how they use E1B1A. Basically, they're saying anyone with E1B1A is Israel. So by their logic, this 97.5 percent European is Israel. Now, if you look at it, if you put that in jet match, you're going to see nothing but European, almost 90, you'll see 97.5 percent Europeans popping up as his match. Pop, 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 right? 97.5 percent Europeans will be coming up on his result set. OK, two point. What is it? Two point five percent will come up as African. But yet they're going to say he Israel because he won't be one. They is the Israelites. That does not work. Okay, is that it? That's it, right? Yeah, that. Okay. What's it's weird about clip. that is, is like, th it's not like in the context of a debate where someone's pressing them, uh, like a hypothetical question or something. They're actually bringing this up, pushing this themselves. Yeah, they they they're using it as an argument against Ron Dalton's position, right? Wait, who, so, who who are they referring to? Saying. The lion, the liar that I is don't know. Coward? I, I think it was somebody that was on. I don't know for certain, but I think they were referring to someone on who was on, maybe on a show with Ron Dalton, and he, yeah, and I think they're making fun of his screen name. I don't know for certain. I don't know. So who they're they're straight to, up I think, saying the 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 lion who was a coward. They're just straight up calling him that the whole time. Yeah, I'm, I again, I assume it's a play on the name. I don't know. Who they're talking about. But if Jeez, let's man. say the gentleman's name was the mighty lion, hypothetically speaking, they right. would, you know something. Like wow. that. I don't know who they were. But the, the gist of that is, so they're saying, you know, Ron Dalton takes this position. If you have this marker, right, you have this paternal marker, then you're an Israelite, right? Now, they're saying, well, that can't be possible because, you know, we found this guy out here. There's an article about him. He has that paternal marker, but most of his, you know, uh, ancestry is European and he's morphologically white. Like he would fit your stereotype of a quote unquote white person mm -hmm. based on his outward appearance. So therefore, he can't be an Israelite. Now, think about the implications of this, what they seem to be saying, or at least is the implication. Let's suppose we went into this guy's lineage and, uh, I don't know, uh, 20, 30 generations back, um, his father's line goes back to a descendant of a victim of the transatlantic slave trade, right? Let's say, it, hypothetically speaking, working within their paradigm, within the paradigm of both Ron Dalton and the um, Tail Ministries, let's assume that if you go back in this guy's line, you're going to find an Israelite. On the one side. Line. Okay. Yes, on his father's line. Yeah. And that Israelite has a son with a quote-unquote white woman, a, a quote-unquote white non-Israelite, right? Then their child, their son, has a son, another son with yet another uh, quote-unquote white woman who's not an Israelite. Then that child, you know, and so on and right. so on. They keep, the, each son keeps having a, a son with 30, a woman who... 30 generations of white women. Yeah, and so as a result, you get this guy... Who looks who fits their stereotype of a white person, but his paternal line, hypothetically speaking, goes back to an Israelite. What they're basically saying, what they're insinuating, is that you can descend paternally from Jacob and not be an Israelite based on your morphology, based on your wow. outward appearance. And I think that's important because it shows how starkly different that is from like the standard white, uh, one West position. Because for them to make a big deal about what his other lines are, aside from his paternal line. The implication is you can have a descendant of Jacob, a paternal descendant of Jacob. His father's father's father goes all the way back to Jacob, but he's not an Israelite because he's, you know, quote unquote white. He's, his skin is too light, his hair is too straight, et cetera, because of the women in his family. This almost makes the one West position superior. 
Yeah, I wanted to give you all a chance to respond to I'll, I'll you know, how, how, how they took what you said and how how what you said how how what you said should be taken. Well, I think we've always made the case that you cannot determine who's a Jew from DNA. I started off this show right here with that. Dr. Nathaniel Jennison states that you cannot determine who's a Jew genetically. That's been our case from the from the beginning. Our whole case about the about the haplogroups not being used to determine who's who. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know who was he listening to because apparently he didn't get understanding. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, we, we're arguing, arguing against uh, ha Dalton's uh, position about the E1B1A versus autosomal, right? And so, as we said, you know, this guy is 97% European. He has, you know, for their example, 30 generations of white. Uh, how, how can a 97% match be an Israelite, right? Uh, when he he, he matches ninety seven percent of European uh, people, so you know that that that's the argument there. But uh, I I don't know why you know I guess they're using it to go against the E one B one A position. But see, this is the problem with the haplogroup argu argument is that it's causing confusion everywhere because you know when you're looking at haplogroup and someone says, "Hey, I'm R one, oh, I'm G." Oh, I'm E, but I'm not E one B one A. I'm E one B one B. You know, and but we all have autosomal matches. Then you know, you have you you producing confusion over a single mutation on a chromosome, one chromosome out of twenty three pairs. Okay, and you're trying to use that to state to to make a a claim of being an Israelite. One mutation. Okay. And as I said, that's not doable with the current argument. If you look at the papers, right, the scientists are using theory as their position, hypothesis, educated guess. OK, so we just need to accept that the argument is not something that's the law of the land. OK, the only place that haplogroup is being presented as something valuable is by 23andMe, Ancestry.com, not even Ancestry.com, but the ones that, that are selling haplogroup tests, they are the ones pushing this, okay? But the papers don't support that this is something that you can use. And and, and if y'all watched our video, you can also have a uh, failed haplogroup test for various reasons, right? There are many reasons why your results will be different. There was a guy uh, well, there was a guy who followed us. He emailed us and even he had three different haplogroup results from three different companies. There was a brother uh, we talked to like four years ago. Same thing. You know, he he had a A0 a for one result, E1B1A for another result. And then uh, I forgot what the third, but they were all different. So once again, that's another area that that's an area of contention. This is an area that uh, proves that you can't, you can't, and you should not rely on haplogroup. And see, just to add to that again, is that Abu makes the mistake of assuming that we were trying to prove that you can use haplogroups to determine who's who. Our whole point was trying to show that the way that Ron Dalton and others are using haplogroups is incorrect, that based upon how they're using it, if that white boy who's 97.5% European yet have a haplogroup of E1B1A, right, if, if he's if he's matching autosomally to European, then how can he be uh, E1B1A? Because I wouldn't think that they would consider him to be an Israelite, would they? Seeing that 97.5%. Well, they would have no choice. I know that's what I'm saying, but but Abu makes the mistake that we were trying to prove either way that this guy is not an Israelite based upon haplogroups. No, we weren't making the case that haplogroups are legit. No, we were showing the fallacy of the use of haplogroup to try and determine anybody. Right. We we've said from the beginning that the best way to identify who is Israel are the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Now they could go after that, and a lot of people backpedal from that but them curses they line up with our people right our, our history is one to one with that okay so from our position the curses are the way you identify who is israel you know it just so happens that you know when they called out sister e they opened up a pandora's box 
and they started seeing all this DNA matches to Limba and, uh, and Jew references everywhere, right? They opened that Pandora box themselves. Okay, so real quick, as a, as a quick devil's advocate question, because I heard what Abu was saying. So just to be clear, um, you're not making an argument that there's a singular phenotype for Israel and because that person was 97% European, he didn't fit that phenotype, and that's why he couldn't be considered Israel, correct? That's yeah, not obviously right. I mean, based upon what we just said, obviously, because guess what? Israel today comes in many colors, right? Even if we look at the historical books, right? They talk about uh, some Israelites were dark black, right? Some Israelites were brown, right? what they call boxwood color, right? Israel came in many colors and definitely still come in many colors today. And right. I wouldn't say that somebody who might look white. Because I, I, I know people who grew up black, grew up with the curses, and they, they could pass for white, right? So I'm not going to say they're not Israel. We've never made that dis that case or that distinction. Right. And those people, you know, a lot of those people that were uh, forced into uh, Africa during the Inquisition, right, during the uh, Spanish Inquisition, a lot of, you know, there's references to some, some Israelites that look white, right? There was a book that referenced that, right? But where are they today? Right. Th those are some that probably had mixed with some of the European people, but they were still Israelites and got kicked out and went to Africa. OK, well, forced to, to go to Africa. So, you you know, phenotype is not what we're saying. What we're saying is if you if you're going to go with that argument, you, you're looking at a person that has a 20, 22, uh, his autosomal 22 chromosomal pairs. Right. He's 97 percent white. Right. So if you go by that and then you try to make the argument that this one single mutation on this one chromosome, which happens to be Y, is legit and that you can say that he's an Israelite. That doesn't make sense. You have you have 20, 97 point, 90, 97 percent of the 22 chromosomes point this guy to European. But they're going to say a single mutation on a Y chromosome, one chromosome is enough to identify Israelite can't be. That's all we're saying. You can't, you can't do that when you have 22 compared to one. Well, I definitely appreciate y'all for clarifying your position on that and making it known to, for the people. I like the way this feel, yeah. Let my soul cry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Minister, we gonna speak from the heart on this one. I'm performing lyrical funerals, no obituary. I killed your boy and brought him back to life. Pet cemetery. My anointing not based on attendance at a seminary. Scarlet witches, they attracted to the visionary. Everywhere I go, I bring the word with me. Missionary. Soldier drafted in the war machine. Military. Pay attention, what I'm saying to you, legendary. You got the demeanor of a front desk secretary. That mean you take the calls, but you don't make the calls That's why you hate, cause ain't nothing fake about me at all Now I dare you try to say that with a straight face My delivery in tip-top great shape I'm too advanced for you, light years, space age No evolution for you cavemen, stone age I'm a thoroughbred Rock solid, I came from the bottom to the top, rock climbing. I grew up in the hood, pros and cons. That's that full court pressure when the MLM roll out the stretch. Why can't you see it's not logical? If you live diabolical, boy, your point of view smaller than the hair follicle molecule. This for all of them that follow you, smoking all of them barbecue. When I pull up, your voice don't correct itself with no auto tune. I got a whole nother level that I can enter whenever I gotta deal with the devil. I pick a whole nother. I hear a whole lot of yapping. They want to see my reaction. I'm really out here in the community making it happen. I, I don't really think they understand the dilemma. They ain't looking at the man in the mirror. I can't say it in the clearer. The plan is very simple. It's time to start planning the temple. Before somebody come and put the can on your temple. Reaching like a baby with his hand for the nipple. The Grand Reaper coming with his hand on the circle. Hit a van coming with a ram with the with the van coming.
never get up. I am so glad that I changed up. Made it out of where I came from. Watch for the sliding hook of the slow ball, fastball, and that change up. That ghetto lifestyle, it changed us. Go back to visit, it ain't changed much. Only difference is now the way that my brain process information. And Satan, but after my life since day one, let me say something. Only reason that I'm still out today, because God's grace is amazing. Just another raisin in the sun. Dream deferred when things occur. Now you can serve right on the curb like a lemonade stand. I just gave you the benediction, let the whole church say amen. Real.